Really pleased. Um, and it's something we've been asking for for a long time and, and, and I'm really glad the foreign sector has done it. And, and as he said there, it, it, it's, it's a big deal. It, it changes the stakes in that it's now a formal dispute between Iran and, and, and the UK. It's a bit unclear as to how that means in practice to what happens next. Mm. But uh, yeah, it, it's great that the sort of the government and the foreign sector specifically has taken a very clear stand and, and very clearly stood up, and as he said there, for Nazanin's innocence and, and that she shouldn't be involved in whatever else is going on. We wanted the government to do it, to, to, to make a clear signal that this needs to be sorted. Um, and obviously what we want Iran to do is to release Nazanin and bring her home. Um, we discussed yesterday with the Foreign Office what we thought might happen. And I think when the Foreign Secretary summoned the Iranian ambassador back in January, um, their reaction was, was hostile initially and, and there were sort of statements to say, listen, she's an Iranian citizen, you have no right and, and various other things. So we, we were kind of expecting, we will see what happens next uh, from the Iranian side. The Iranian ambassador did tweet this um, overnight to say, listen, that she's an Iranian citizen and, and you know, the UK has got no right under international law, which is not technically true, but, but uh, I mean, I was expecting there would be pushback. So hopefully there'll be some rhetorical pushback, but then a, an attempt to sort of try and solve this.